As the most expensive weapons program in history, the F-35 stealth fighter was supposed to be the pinnacle of modern military technology. With advanced stealth capabilities, advanced avionics, and impressive firepower, the F-35 was designed to dominate the skies for decades to come. However, despite its lofty promises and eye-watering price tag, the F-35 has been plagued with a litany of problems since its inception. From software bugs to engine failures, from design flaws to cost overruns, the F-35 has become a symbol of the shortcomings of modern military procurement. Despite its many setbacks, the F-35 remains in production and continues to be deployed by militaries around the world. But as its problems continue to mount and its costs soar ever higher, many are left wondering whether the F-35 will ever truly live up to its promise, or if it will go down in history as an unstoppable failure of modern military technology. In recent months, a slew of bad press for Lockheed Martin's long-troubled F-35 Joint Strike Fighter has once again made calling the fifth-generation jet a failure culturally en vogue. From overt statements about the aircraft's financial woes to newly announced tech issues causing strategic pauses in development and even an apparent lack of confidence in the aircraft coming out of the Air Force's top brass. The Joint Strike Fighter program hasn't faced such an uphill battle since the Pentagon first decided it wanted a single aircraft that could hover like a Harrier, fly supersonic like an Eagle, sneak past defenses like a Nighthawk, and land on carriers like a Super Hornet. With all of this bad press, the inclination for some is to simply dismiss the F-35 program as an egregious acquisition debacle and nothing else. After all, the aircraft still can't go into full-rate production because of a laundry list of issues, hundreds of delivered airframes may never actually be combat-ready, and the Air Force isn't even sure they can afford to operate an F-35-focused fleet. With all of that piled up in the con column, it's easy to see why some people never make it past those cons to begin with. Assessing the F-35's worth, concept versus reality. The truth is, the F-35 isn't a concept it's an aircraft and that's an important distinction. Concepts can usually be neatly filed under right or wrong, good or bad. Real things, by and large, aren't so easily organized, and often are as much a product of their challenges as their original design. Every groundbreaking military aircraft program has faced setbacks, and while no aircraft program has ever cost as much as the F-35 promises to in its lifetime, that cost doesn't negate the real capability the fighter brings to the table. Let me be clear this isn't an argument in favor of the F-35 program, or even necessarily for the jet to keep its lauded position atop the Air Force's priority list. It's just an objective observation about what this fighter can do. Again, as a concept, we can neatly file the intent behind the F-35 in the good idea category and the execution behind paying for it in the bad idea one but in terms of this specific aircraft made of nuts and bolts, those distinctions aren't quite as important as they are to the broader discussion. We can either take the significant leap in capability the F-35 offers and find a way to shoehorn it into a pragmatic model for spending as we move forward, or not. Lessons learned from the F-35's acquisition debacle should certainly inform how America sources its next fighters, but in terms of the F-35 itself, only time travel could solve most of these past headaches, and time travel is one of the things Lockheed Martin has yet to deliver. So let's divorce ourselves from the emotion tied to dollar exchanges ranked in the trillions, forget about the frustration we've felt as the F-35 program has languished behind delays, and look at this fighter for what it was meant to be, what it is, and what it can be in the years ahead. Past failures in one column don't necessarily mean future failures in another, after all. The F-35 might be a horror story in accounting, but it's also a massive success from the vantage point of its trigger pullers. Asking for the impossible. The first studies that would lead to the Joint Strike Fighter program as we know it began in 1993, with America shopping for a short takeoff, vertical landing fighter that could operate in the modern era. Soon, the Pentagon took notice of other fighter programs in development and posited a theory, if America could find one airplane that could replace a whole host of aging platforms, it would shrink acquisition cost, streamline maintenance and operation training, remove many of the logistical headaches tied to operating a large number of aircraft in far-flung theaters, and make everyone's day that much easier and less expensive. In hindsight, of course, those goals weren't just naive, they may have been the program's first major problem. 
Lockheed Martin, the same firm responsible for the world's first operational stealth aircraft, the F-117 Nighthawk, and the world's first operational stealth fighter, the F-22 Raptor, would ultimately beat out Boeing for the Joint Strike Fighter contract, thanks to their track record in the field of stealth and impressive technology demonstrators. Today, meeting the broad requirements of three American military branches and at least two foreign partners is one of the F-35's biggest selling points, but in the late 1990s, it was akin to Kennedy's announcement that America would put a man on the moon within the following decade. It was a good idea on paper, but nobody really knew how to make it actually happen. But money has a way of making the impossible start to look improbable, and then eventually, mundane. The Saturn V that kept Kennedy's promise about the moon was the most complex and powerful machine ever devised by man, and by Apollo 13 just NASA's third mission to the moon the American people already thought the rocket's trip through space was too boring to watch. Likewise, building a supersonic, stealth fighter that can hover over amphibious assault ships sounded downright crazy, that is, right up until it was boring. Making the impossible mundane costs lots of money. In order to meet the disparate needs of a single aircraft that could replace at least five planes across multiple military forces, Lockheed Martin chose to devise three iterations of their new fighter. The F-35A would be the closest to what might be considered a traditional multi-role fighter intended to take off and land on well-manicured airstrips found on military installations the world over. The second, dubbed the F-35B, would incorporate a directional jet nozzle and hidden fan to provide the aircraft with enough lift to hover and land vertically for use aboard Marine Corps amphibious assault ships or on austere, hastily cleared airstrips. Finally, a carrier-capable variant dubbed the F-35C would boast the greater wingspan necessarily for lower speed carrier landings, along with a reinforced fuselage that could withstand the incredible forces tied to serving aboard an aircraft carrier. The plan was to leave as much about all three iterations as identical as possible, so parts, production, training, and maintenance could be similar enough regardless of the operating theater. That plan would prove infeasible almost immediately. Lockheed Martin drew some criticisms in 2019 when they told Japan that they could build a new stealth fighter that bridges the capabilities of the F-35 and F-22 while all coming in at a lower cost seemingly acknowledging the fiscal irresponsibility of the F-35 program to date. There's another way to look at that statement though. The first time you do something will always cost more than the second. As time goes on, that advanced technology becomes more commonplace and less expensive, and then a new expensive technology comes along to take its place. We should expect the next stealth fighter to either cost a whole bunch less or do a whole bunch more. That's just the nature of warfare and technology. If your opinion of the F-35 is derived on paper, as a measure of carried ones and zeros split with commas, it's probably safe to say you think it's a failure, but the F-35 wasn't built to operate on paper. This fighter was meant to give America's warfighters an edge over the competition, and if you ask the guys and gals flying it, that's exactly what it's done.